wa innaka and indeed you meaning you o prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam latulaqqa alqur'ana you receive the quran min ladun hakim and alim from one who is wise and knowing tulaqqa tulaqqa is from the root letters lam qa ya and the word is actually tutalaqqa the word is actually tutalaqqa but because there are two ta it becomes repetitive therefore one ta is eliminated and this is from talaqi and talaqa shay is to receive something laqiya what does it mean to meet and talaqa shay is to receive something but in particular it is also used for learning something remember we learned earlier that fatalaqa adam min rabbihi kalimatin that adam alayhi salam he received some words from his lord meaning he learned them he was inspired those words so talaqa ya talaqa talaqi what does it mean to learn something to learn something formally so wa innaka latulaqqa alquran you are being made to receive the quran meaning you are taught the quran from who min ladun hakim and alim from the one who is hakim and alim This book is not ordinary. This book is not something that's insignificant. No. It's something that is very great because it's the book of who? Hakim and Alim. The one who is wise and the one who is knowing. Hakim, ahkam al-hukama, the most wise of all those who are wise. The one who is wise in his commands, the one who is wise in his prohibitions. and this wisdom is manifested in this book as well and he is alim a'lam al ulama the most knowledgeable of those who are knowledgeable because he is the one who knows about all things major as well as minor so if he is the one who is giving you this book realize how special this book is what an important source of guidance this book is what an important source of instruction this book is then how how can you turn away how can you think that something else is better how can you prefer something else over the quran think about it because many times what happens people get distracted from the quran by many other things by many attractive things of this dunya a degree here work here isn't it so But what do we see? That this book is from who? Hakim and Alim. People want to learn many other things. Why? Because they think if they learn, they'll become knowledgeable. But what do we see? That if this book is from Allah who is Alim, then the best knowledge, the most accurate knowledge, the most beneficial knowledge, where is it? It's in this book. People want to learn great things. they want to work so that they can gain experience so that they can gain wisdom isn't it they can gain life experience so that they can learn a lot of wisdom but what do we see over here that true wisdom where is it it's in the quran wa innaka latulaqqa alquran min ladun hakim and alim and the more importance a person gives to this book the more time a person spends with this book the more he learns this book the more he will increase in his ilm and his hikmah because his book comes from who hakim and alim we we'll listen to the recitation then we we'll continue why because in this story are many many lessons that can be learned and in particular there is also tasbeet al qalb for who for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to strengthen the heart of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam So when Musa alayhi salam said to his wife, "Inni anastu nara," indeed I have perceived a fire. When did he say this to her? At the time when Musa alayhi salam was traveling with his wife from Madian to where? To Egypt. Remember that Musa alayhi salam he was originally from Egypt, and when he by mistake he killed a Coptic man, what happened? He had to run away immediately in order to save his life. and obviously he repented to allah seeking his forgiveness and when he escaped egypt where did he reach madian 
And when he reached Madian, he got married over there and he stayed over there for 10 years. And after 10 years, he went along with his family, where? To Egypt. So on his way from Madian to Egypt, what happened? He said to his wife, that in the Anastunara, indeed I have perceived a fire. Where? On the mountain, at a distance. Anastu is from the root letters Hamza, Noon, Seen. Inas. And Inas is to notice something. We read the word, Hatta Tasta'nisu. That do not enter houses other than your houses until you have Tasta'nisu. Istinas. What does it mean? To make yourself familiar. Istidhan is to seek permission and istinas is to make yourself familiar, to make yourself perceivable, that you announce your coming, your entrance by saying the salam, by introducing yourself. So like for example, when you go to your house, what do you do? You can just walk in, you don't need to take permission, but what do you have to do? You have to make your presence known. Why? So that other people do not get afraid. So, Anas to Inas is to notice something, to perceive something, to sense something. So in the Anas to Nara, I have noticed, I have sensed, I have seen a fire at a distance. It is said that this incident, it took place in the night. Because when can you see fire at a distance? In the night. And so it was dark, and on top of that it was also a very cold and chilly night because they were traveling through the desert and remember in the desert during the night it is quite cold so inni anastu nara sa'atikum minha bi khabarin i will come to you from it meaning from that fire with some news meaning stay here i will go and see what's going on over there perhaps i can find some information some khabar and i will come back to you with that khabar now what could this khabar be? It is said that Musa a.s. had lost his way. He wasn't quite sure about his route. So he wanted to go there to see if there's fire, there's going to be people over there. So perhaps I can ask them about which way to go, which direction to take. Maybe I can see what's going on over there. I can figure out where we are, where we should be going. And if not that... أو آتيكم, if the people over there cannot help me with regards to that, then perhaps, or, آتيكم, I will come to you, بِشِهَابٍ قَبَسٍ With a firebrand. Why? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَسْطَلُونَ So that you can warm yourselves. And this shows that it was cold at that time. Now the word shihab, shihab is from the root letters, sheen haba, and shihab is used for a bright burning flame that is in the fire. So what is it? Flame. And qabas, from the root letters qaf, ba, seen. And qabas is used for live coal, for a firebrand. So like for example, you have a stick of fire and it has been lit on fire. Or a live coal which is on fire. So something like that which is on fire. So she have been a flame on what? Qabasin, on a firebrand. Why? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَسْطَلُونَ So that you can warm yourselves. تَسْطَلُونَ from the root letters. صَاد لَمْ يَا And the ta that you see over here, تَسْطَلُونَ This ta was actually originally a ta. But because صَاد is a heavy letter, this is why the ta has been changed into ta. So that it's easier to pronounce. تَسْطَلُونَ And إِسْطَلَى is to obtain heat, to obtain warmth from the fire. So I'll go, I'll try to get some information, and if not that, perhaps I can get you some fire from there so that you can warm yourselves. Now, we learned something very beautiful over here. First of all, look at how the husband is caring for his wife in a journey. That he says to her, you wait here, I'll go, get some information, and if not that, perhaps I can get you some fire so that you can warm yourselves. Look at how concerned he is about his wife. Look at how caring he is in their journey. He doesn't make his wife walk all the way to the fire. It was the middle of the night, dark, cold. So he says, you wait here, I'll go check out what's happening. And he is concerned about the family. 
this is why he goes to the fire and he wants to get some fire from there or some information from there. Typically what happens when people are traveling, each person expects to be served. Isn't it? I should be served. I should be helped out. But we see that it's the responsibility of the man, the qawwam, that he should be looking after his family, his wife, his children on a trip. We also see something very beautiful over here, that look at how he is addressing his wife. If we take the meaning of ahl to be his wife only, as the word ahl is used for wife only as well, it may also refer to family, but in particular it's also used for wife. If we take the meaning of ahl to be wife, then look at how he is addressing her. Ati kum, la'alla kum, kum, plural. Why? For tashrif, for honor, for respect. Typically what happens? Normally, what does the culture dictate? That the wife should be respecting the husband, and the husband can treat the wife however he wants to. But we see that it's a very noble characteristic of a man to give respect to his wife. And this is why Musa was chosen. Look at how caring and concerned he is. Look at how he is serving his family. And look at how he addresses them. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him. Despite the fact that he didn't have many other skills, but because he had this concern for people, he cared for people, he undertook hardship on himself in order to help other people out. This is why he was chosen. And it demonstrates his noble character, his noble akhlaq. فَلَمَّا جَاءَهَا But then when he came to it, what happened? Nudia, he was called out. He came to the fire, thinking perhaps he will find some people over there. He can talk to them. If nothing, he'll get some fire from there. But when he got there, what happened? Nudia, he was called out, Anburika. All of a sudden, he was called out that blessed is man fin nari wa man hawlaha. Blessed is whoever is at the fire and whoever is around it. Now just imagine, middle of the night, you're approaching a fire. You don't know who's going to be there. Because sometimes when you are in a place such as this, in the middle of nowhere, you really have no idea what kind of people you will find. Isn't it? And all of a sudden, he walks up. He doesn't find any person. He just sees the fire. And he is spoken to. And he doesn't know where the voice is coming from. And he is told, That blessed is the one who is at the fire and the one who is around the fire. Who said this to him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this to him. Burika from the root letters. Baraka. Burika meaning he is blessed. He is full of blessing. And what does it mean by this? That burika man fin Who does man fin refer to? And who does waman hawlaha refer to? This has been understood in a number of ways. First of all, it has been said that man fin nar, the one who is in the fire, it refers to Musa a.s. And by saying fin nar, in the fire, it doesn't mean inside the fire, but it means fi makan in nar, in the place of the fire. Meaning place? By the fire. The place where the fire is. Or it can be understood as man fi talab in nar, the one who is in search of the fire. So Musa a.s. came in search of fire, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Burika man fin nar. Blessed is the one who is at the fire, in search of the fire. And wa man hawlaha, and the one who is around it, who does that refer to? It refers to the angels. Others have said that man fin nar, who is in the fire, it refers to the angels. And Man hawlaha, it refers to Musa a.s. Because Musa a.s. was by the fire. He was approaching the fire. He was not exactly at that place. Thirdly, it has been said that man fin nar refers to both Musa a.s. as well as the angels. And man hawlaha, the one that is around it, it refers to the area, the place. Which place? The area of Asham. 
Because that is where this mount was and that is where the fire was and that is where Musa a.s. was spoken to by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So man fin nar wa man hawlaha. What does man hawla refer to then? The area of Asham. Others have said that man fin nar, it refers to the place of the fire. Meaning that which is on fire. Because the fire was not just on nothing. It wasn't just floating in the air. No. It is said that it was on a particular tree. And the tree was very bright. It was green. It wasn't being consumed by the fire. And the fire was also extremely bright. So, Buri ka man finnal, and this made Musa a.s. realize that this is not ordinary fire and this is not ordinary tree. This is something special that's going on over here. So he must have been curious. He must have been amazed. He must have been surprised. So all of a sudden he's told that anburi kaman finnar, meaning this tree or this place that is on fire, it is blessed. Woman hawlaha, and that which is around it, again it refers to the area of asham. Others have said that anburi kaman finnar, it refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what does it mean by finnar? Because where is Allah? Allah is on His throne. So finnar is understood as nar, it gives meaning of nur. We don't understand this as fire, but rather we understand this as nur, light. And we understand man finnar as that the one who is calling you from the fire. The one who is calling you from the fire. Because this fire was not a typical burning fire. What was it in reality? It was Allah's nur that had been cast on the fire or Allahu A'lam. So man fin now refers to the one who is calling you from the fire. And Ibn Abbas anhu he said that it was not a fire, rather it was a shining light. It was not a fire, rather it was what? A shining light. So, meaning the one you can hear, the one who is calling you, who is he? Allah. So, buri ka man fin nar, wa man hawlaha, and the one who is around it, meaning Musa alayhi salam. Wa subhanallahi rabbil alameen, and glorified is Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Why is this mentioned over here? Subhanallahi rabbil alameen. Remember that whenever we talk about the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the specific actions of Allah, about the light of Allah, about how He has done a particular thing, we don't go into the details of how. We don't go into the details of the kayfiya, kayf. Meaning we don't question kayf, how. We take it as it is. So, subhanallah, what does subhanallah mean? Perfect is Allah above any imperfection, above any fault. So do not start comparing Him with others. So over here, it is as though we are being reminded that don't go into the details of how, how come Allah was speaking to him from that fire, how could Musa a.s. hear Allah from that fire, from that nur, from that light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do whatever He wants however he wants, in whatever way. So was subhanallah, glorified is Allah, Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. So do not think that Allah has descended to that tree, because this is what some people say, that Allah actually descended to that tree at that moment, and this is why it has been said, man finna, no. We cannot say that, because where is Allah? He is above his arsh, and he is far above any comparison with his creation. Nothing that he has made can encompass him. You understand? So if we say that Allah was actually in that light, Allah was in that tree, na'udhu billah, then what would it mean? That that tree, that light, it encompassed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But who is Allah? Subhanallah. He's glorified, He's above that. So, anburi ka man fin nar wa man hawlaha, what does it mean? That the one whom you can hear, the one who is calling you out from this light, He is blessed. And the one who is around it, the one who is by it, meaning Musa a.s., he is also blessed. How? That he is going to be given prophethood. Wa subhanallahi rabbil alameen. And glorified is Allah, 
the Lord of the worlds. We learned this in Surah Al-Qasas, ayah number 30 as well. That فَلَمَّا أَتَاهَا That when Musa a.s. came to it, نُوذِيَ مِنْ شَاطِئِ الْوَادِ الْأَيْمَنِ فِي الْبُقَعَةِ الْمُبَارَكَةِ مِنَ الشَّجَرَةِ So over here the tree is not mentioned. But elsewhere, what do we learn? That when Musa a.s. came to that fire, he was called from the right side of the valley in a blessed spot from the tree. From the tree he was called. And over here, what do we learn? The fire, the nar. So where was that nar? Upon that tree. And where was the voice coming from? From that location. Ya Musa. And what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to Musa alayhi salam? That Ya Musa, innahu, indeed he. Ana, I, Allah, al-Aziz al-Hakim, the exalted in might, the wise. And Musa alayhi salam must have been wondering that what's going on? Anburi kaman fin nar wa man hawlaha. So all of a sudden Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that innahu indeed he, meaning the one whom you hear, ana, I am, the voice of whom you hear is Allah. Al-Aziz, Al-Hakim, the mighty, the wise. And then Musa alayhi salam, he had a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was given prophethood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, as we have learned in other places of the Qur'an, that Musa alayhi salam had been chosen as a messenger to be sent to who? Fir'aun and his people. And we have learned all of the details in other places. And over here in particular, what is mentioned? The miracles that were given to Musa alayhi salam. وَأَلْقِي عَصَاكَ And Musa alayhi salam was told, and throw down your staff. Now just imagine, it's dark. There's only that light coming from the tree. And he's alone. His wife is not there with him anymore. No other person. And he's told, وَأَلْقِي عَصَاكَ And throw your staff. And then, فَلَمَّا رَآهَا And then when he saw it, تَهْتَزُّ It was moving. كَأَنَّهَا جَانٌ As if it was a snake. Just imagine, if you see a snake in broad daylight, does it frighten you? Yes. But if you see a snake in the night, in the little bit of light that you have, would that frighten you? Of course, even more so. So he threw the staff, and all of a sudden he saw it, تَهْتَزُّ تَهْتَزُّ هَا زَاي زَاي Remember, وَهُزِّي إِلَيْكِ بِجِدْعِ النَّخْلَةِ What does it mean to shake something? So تَهْتَزُّ إِهْتِزَاز is when something moves, when something quivers quickly, as if it has been shaken. Like for example, imagine you have a rope, and you shake it. So how is it going to move? Quickly, right? It's going to be like slithering, wriggling. So tahtazu, it was moving ka'annaha jan, as if it was a snake. The word jan is used for a snake, and the verb jannah, jim noon, with the fatha on the noon, it means literally to hide something from the senses, when something is hidden, when you cannot fully perceive it. And jan is used for a long and slender snake. What kind of a snake? A long and slender because such a snake can very easily hide. Isn't it so? It can easily wrap around something and you won't be able to see it. It can quickly enter into some hole and you won't be able to figure it out. So long and slender. And earlier we read the word Surban. Surban is what? A huge gigantic snake. So the staff it turned into Surban where? In the court of its own. So ka'annaha jan. So what happened then? When he saw his staff turning into a snake, moving like a snake, walla mudbiran, he turned away, showing his back. Walla is to turn physically away from something, so he fled. Mudbiran, physically showing his back, he turned around and he ran. Walam yuraqib, and he did not even turn back. He just turned around. And he ran and he didn't stop and even look back. Why? Obviously he was frightened. Your aqib is from the root letters, ayn qaf ba, ta'qib. And ta'qib is to look back, to turn around. So what happened then? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Musa alayhi salam, Ya Musa, la takhaf. 
O Musa, don't fear. Why? Because inni la yakhafu ladayya al-mursaloon. Indeed, I la yakhafu. He does not fear. Ladayya near me. Who? Al-mursaloon, the messengers. The messengers, they don't fear near me. When they're with me, they're not afraid. They should not be afraid. Now Musa a.s. is being taught a great lesson over here. That first of all, إِنِّي لَا يَخَافُ لَدَيَّ الْمُرْسَلُونَ What does that show? That he has been made a messenger. And secondly, he is being given this confidence that when I am with you, when my help is with you, when my guidance and instruction is with you, then you should not be afraid. You should not be frightened. Because Musa a.s. was going to go to who? Fir'aun. And he was going to deal with who? All those magicians. And he was going to deal with the sea before him and the army of Fir'aun behind him. And then he was going to deal with the Bani Israel as well. So he needed a lot of confidence for that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him a huge lesson over here. That no matter what situation you're in, no matter how vulnerable you may be, no matter how frightened you may be, but remember that when I am with you, when my help and aid is with you, then do not be afraid. Inni la yakhafu al mursalun. So Musa a.s. was basically being prepared for the future over here. Now remember when the Prophet ﷺ, when he received the first revelation, was he frightened? Yes, he was. And over here also, Musa a.s. when he received the first revelation, he was also frightened. What does that show? That the Prophets are who? They're human beings. They have natural feelings. They get afraid. They also get confidence. They may also feel weak. They may feel very strong. They're human beings. 